Welcome back to Teachable Moments with April. So today we're going to look at a website that I found, um, newcreations.org, and we are going to explore the many names of God. Then we're going to look under ministry article, how to see many amazing names of God. Back in the Bible days, a person's name usually said something about that person's character or destiny. This is why the many names of God are vitally important for us to see and understand. Each name of God reveals something about his character. At the same time, God's names show us many different ways in which he is there to help us in our times of need. We can see God's names revealed to us throughout the pages of Scripture. Often the Bible reveals a new name of God when the people either face a great need or when um, they see God through and bless them in a spectacular way. As time passed, the people of God received more and more revelation about the nature of God. This process continues today as his people discover more of his character. Each of us individually has the ability to learn ever more about God and his nature as we walk throughout life. This is why it is so important to have a personal relationship with God the Father directly. Without the direct personal connection, we only learn about God without ever going to actually know him. By spending time in prayer and meditation on each name of God, we can come to know him in a far more personal and intimate way. Names of God Below are the various names of God listed in the order of their first appearance in the Bible. Included as a link to the scripture verse where the first mention of that name of God occurs along with how many times that name is mentioned throughout the Bible. Elohim, God, first seen in Genesis 11 and it's used 2,599 times in the Bible. This is the very first name given to God found in the very first verses or verse of Genesis. The name shows that God is the majestic ruler over all. Elohim is actually a plural word and is used as the first name of God and sets him high above all the other gods. It is also foreshadows the later revelation of the uh, Godhead, uh, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yahweh, Lord, Jehovah. First seen in Genesis 2, 4, and is used 6,519 times in the Bible. Yahweh is the promised proper name of God. It means Lord and Master. By Jewish tradition, this name is too holy to pronounce or write. Therefore, they just wrote four letters without any vowels. Capital Y, capital H, capital W, capital H. Jews stopped saying the name altogether in the 3rd century AD. They stopped saying this name because they were afraid of violating the 4th commandment that prohibits misusing or taking the Lord's name in vain. Therefore, scholars today don't know for sure if the original pronunciation was Yahweh or Jehovah. Tradition follows the com- convention used in the King James Version, which translates uh, Yahweh by itself, which is, and they show it uh, minus uh, the A and the E, by itself as Lord with a capital L and small capital letters for the rest of the word. This is done to set it apart from other uses of the word Lord. Then whenever Yahweh occurs, As a compound name with other words, the translators use the word Jehovah instead. This is part two of the amazing names of God. El Elyon, the Most High God, first seen in Genesis 14, 18, And it's actually used 52 times in the Bible, sometimes without L, simply as Elion. 
El is likely related to the word Elohim and is used in conjunction with other descriptive words to specifically reference a particular characteristic of God. Elion means highest or most high. Used together, El Elion means the most high God. It refers to the characteristic of God that is above everyone and everything. This name describes his position as sovereign and majestic and preeminent God. Adane or Adonai, Lord, Master. First seen in Genesis 15:2, and it is actually used 434 times in the Bible. Because the Jews have a tradition of not pronouncing nor spelling out the, the promised proper name of God, they often would use Adane or Adonai instead of Yahweh. Adonai means Lord, Master, or Owner. This name emphasized that God is in charge of His creation and His people, Lord of Lords. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals you, occurs only once in Exodus 15.26. Jehovah is actually Yahweh um, and means Lord and Master. It is the promised and proper name of God. Rapha means to heal or make uh, healthful. However, uh, Jehovah Rapha means the Lord who heals you. God is the great physician who heals his people. This truth in God's name applies equally to emotional, psychological, and physical healing, as well as to nations and individuals alike. Jehovah Nessi, the Lord is my banner, occurs only once in Exodus 17, 15. Jehovah is actually Yahweh and means Lord and Master. It is the promised and proper name of God. Nisi or Nessi means flag or banner. So together, Jehovah Nisi means the Lord is my banner. God himself is our banner and victory. He gives us hope and a focus, and is the one who wins our battles. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace, occurs only once in Judges 6.24. Jehovah is actually Yahweh, Lord and Master, and it is the promised and proper name of God. Shalom means peace, absence of strife, complete or sound. Used together, Jehovah Shalom means Lord is peace. When it seems like the whole world is against you or that you are completely unable to deal with whatever problem is in front of you, you turn to the God of peace to find comfort and strength. Have a story to tell? Do you want to connect with others? Or maybe you want to build your brand and raise your brand awareness? Words are powerful. Your voice is important. Your voice needs to be heard. Let your voice be heard. Anchor FM is the answer. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. You can make money from your podcast with minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide, only occurs once in Genesis twenty-two, fourteen. Jehovah is actually Yahweh and means Lord and Master. It is the promised and proper name of God. Jireh means to see or provide. When Isaac asked uh, Abraham uh, where the lamb was for the sacrifice, Abraham replied that the Lord would provide. After God provided the ram for the sacrifice, Abraham named that place on Mount Moriah, 
Jehovah Jireh, meaning the Lord will provide. God is quietly arranging things behind the scenes that they will be in just the right place exactly when we need them. Jehovah Shama, the Lord is there, occurs only once in Ezekiel 48:35. It is the promised and proper name of God. Shama is an adverb that simply means there. Although when it's used in relation to time, it means then. Together, Jehovah Shama means the Lord is there. God revealed His name at a time when Israel was in rebellion and in captivity. God was letting the Jews know that He had not forsaken them and that He was still there, both in their present as well as in their future. Regardless of what you are going through or what you are heading into. You can take comfort knowing that God is already there. Yehovah Sikinu, first seen in Jeremiah twenty-three six. Jehovah is actually Yahweh, Lord and Master. It is the promised and proper name of God. Sikinu means justice, rightness, righteousness, deliverance, victory, and prosperity. Used together, Yehovah Sikinu means the Lord who is our righteousness. God Himself stands for us and provides us with His righteousness and justice when we don't have any in ourselves. He is the one who provides victory and prosperity. El Alam, the everlasting God, first seen in Genesis twenty-one thirty-three, actually used four hundred and thirty-nine times in the Bible. El is likely related to the word Elohim, and is used in conjunction with other descriptive words to specifically reference a particular characteristic of God. Olim means forever, always, continuous existence, perpetual, everlasting, evermore, indefinite or unending future. Used together, El Olim means the everlasting God. He exists beyond time and space. We contain comfort in the fact that God always was and always will be God. Nothing will ever face will change that because God is unchangeable.